This week we have the sun moving into Aries, birthing a new beginning in our lives. And we have Mars, the fiery warrior, moving into water sign Pisces. All of this, an empowered moment and more in my new weekly intuitive energy forecast for the week of Monday, March 18th through Sunday, March 24th, 2024. Stay tuned. This is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from Sacred Soul Empowerment. This week, we're going to be using the Psychic Tarot by John Holland for the main message for everyone for this intuitive energy forecast. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, is going to be coming from the Spellcasting Oracle Card deck. And this is by... Flavia Kate Peters and Barbara Meikle John Free. So before we get into looking at your stones of choice or talking about the astrology for this week, let's go ahead and settle in and do an empowered moment. So if you want to sit or recline or even lie down, closing your eyes, taking a deep breath and relaxing your body and clearing your mind. Focusing only on this present moment and imagining, seeing, feeling, or just knowing that you're surrounded in beautiful, nurturing, protective, healing golden white light. Sense that golden white light all around you. Let it expand around you from head to toe and taking a deep breath with the intention that you're breathing in that protective healing energy of the golden white light, the energy of the universe. As you exhale, and each time you exhale, you're letting go of all that your body, mind, and soul no longer needs, allowing your body to relax even more with each exhale. And focusing your attention on the idea of the spring equinox here in the northern hemisphere. This is when the sun moves into Aries, first sign of the zodiac. Aries is full of fire and energy and passion and initiation. So focus your attention on what it is you'd like to create, what new path would you like to manifest? What new direction would you like to go? What new opportunities would you like to experience? And as you form that vision completely in your mind, take in a deep breath breathing in that vision, breathing life into that vision, breathing energy into that vision. And as you exhale, blowing that intention out to the universe where it can be made manifest in divine timing. Now let's take one last deep healing, cleansing, balancing breath. Let's open our eyes in our own time and return to this time and place and space and get ready to look at your stones of choice for that special message card a little bit later. And the first stone of choice is golden calcite. So the golden calcite is going to connect with that solar plexus chakra, our center of personal power. It assists with responsibility in leadership and correct use of power. It helps us with confidence and courage, increased self-worth. 
And it also helps us to overcome any obstacles or blocks that might stand in our way as we move forward with that confidence and courage to reach our goals. The second stone of choice, this is called Vesuvianite. Vesuvianite, and this aligns the heart with a state of wholeness and integrity so that we're operating from a place of, of, from the heart chakra, but with integrity. It encourages enthusiasm for life. So if you've felt a little lackluster lately these days, this is gonna help us to bring in more of a sense of enthusiasm for life. It imparts courage to change. So if you need to make any changes in your life, it's gonna give you courage. And it helps one to find their true path. And our last stone of choice, this is also a yellow stone, but this one is called lemon quartz, a little bit lighter in color and vibration than the golden calcite. But the lemon quartz actually connects with or is ruled by the planet Jupiter in astrology. And Jupiter is the planet of abundance, prosperity, blessings, and opportunities. This is going to help us with joy and bringing in a sense of achievement in our lives. It helps with optimism, prosperity, good fortune, inner strength, knowledge, and clarity. So again, our stones of choice are going to be the golden calcite, the Vesuvianite, and the lemon quartz. Okay, so let's set that aside and let's go ahead and take a look at the astrology for the week. So Tuesday, the 19th of March, this is when the sun moves into Aries, the spring equinox, where the sun is going to stay until April 19th, so a full month. The sun is our individuality and how we shine our light, our confidence, our courage, our ego, our personality. And of course, again, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So it's about planting new seeds, initiation. It's about fresh beginnings or new beginnings and fresh starts. It is about leadership confidence, courage, taking charge, right? This is gonna, this is an action oriented sign. And lately we've been in the Pisces energy, right? We still do have some planets in Pisces, another one actually this week going into Pisces, but that sun moving into Aries for the spring equinox really kicks something off for us, right? Now on the same day, Tuesday the 19th, Mercury, the planet of the mind, the one that rules our thoughts and ideas and perceptions and communications, is moving into its shadow period. Now, Mercury doesn't officially go retrograde until April 1st and stays retrograde for the first three plus weeks of April. So pretty much the whole month of April, we have a Mercury retrograde but it's already going into its shadow period, meaning we're already going to feel some of the effects of Mercury retrograde. When Mercury moves it to, into its shadow, it starts to slow down its movement. And that's why we start to feel some of those Mercury retrograde uh, feelings or energies a little bit early. So we might have uh, miscommunication or missed meetings and miss, miss messages or confusing messages. We might have some technology difficulties, phone, computer, um, and other electrical devices. It's uh, probably, you know, I want to say during Mercury retrograde, it's definitely not a time to sign contracts if you can help it. When Mercury goes into its shadow here on March 19th, you might want to just pay extra special attention to all the details of written contracts or beginning something new. Um, because there might be some slowdowns or there might be some, again, some miscommunication or some confusion in the details. And we just want to make sure that all of our I's are dotted and all of our T's are crossed. Now, on Wednesday the 20th, we have Mercury in Aries, which I guess I failed to mention when I said Mercury is going into its shadow on Tuesday. Mercury is in Aries, right? So Mercury has already been in Aries. The sun is moving into Aries on the 19th. Now, 
Mercury in Aries is much more confident in its communication, much more forthright in its communication, a little bit more assertive in its communication, new ideas, new perceptions kind of coming in um, with a lot of energy and passion. Now on the 20th, Wednesday, Mercury in Aries is gonna connect with Chiron, the wounded healer and shaman, who is also in Aries. Yes, Chiron's been in Aries a really long time. It spends quite a, quite a length of time in each sign of the zodiac. Some signs it stays longer in than others. But it's been in Aries for a while, helping us to heal our self-confidence, our self-identity, our leadership ability, our courage to move forward, our individuality. And so Mercury connecting with Chiron is going to bring up some healing energies for us. Um, our thoughts, our perceptions, again, maybe undergoing some shifts or some healing or realignment in the mental body that's going on and happening. Um, we could have communications either within ourselves or with other people that bring about some sort of healing or brings up some wounds that need healing. Then when we move to Thursday, the 21st of March, we've got the sun in Aries, and it's going to make a positive sextile to Pluto, planet of death and rebirth, transformation and regeneration, who is in Aquarius. So there's an opportunity here for some powerful energies of transition, some powerful energies of change that's going on. Now you have to look for the opportunity, be aware of the opportunity and take action on the opportunity in order for it to produce anything hugely transformative. So make sure you're watching out for what that might bring. It might also simply just bring a transformation within your sense of self. Again, that that sense of confidence and courage and and you know being um, more energized and vital within your expression out in life. On the same day, Thursday the 21st, we have Venus who is in Pisces. Now Venus rules love and relationships as well as personal resources like money and finances. Venus in Pisces is gonna connect with Saturn in Pisces. Now Saturn is known as the karmic teacher of lessons or the teacher of karmic lessons, however you wanna say that. And Saturn rules limitation, restriction, feeling held back, uh, patience, needing to slow down a little bit, stay grounded. But Saturn also is about form and structure and manifestation. So this could go one of two ways. We might either be kind of experiencing these lessons when it comes to love and relationships a little bit more strongly, maybe some victimization energies because Pisces sometimes falls into that victim or victim martyr kind of energy. This could actually though conversely bring some sort of strength within the relationship or some sort of uh, maybe a grounding, you know, to where there's more of a commitment on some level in the relationship. In money and finances, again, it could go either way. We could feel a little uh, depressed in a way or uh, held back from either making money or having the amount of money and resources that we desire or feel like we need. Um, on the other hand, again, this could bring in a sense of maybe some magical blessings. I like to think of Pisces as this sign of miracle and miracles and magic. So Saturn could help to manifest some sort of miracles or magic. So definitely make sure you keep your mindset in a glass half full mentality rather than a glass half empty in order to manifest the best out of that uh, transit. On Friday the 22nd, this is when Mars, the warrior planet, the planet of energy, action, forward movement, and the planet that rules Aries in the zodiac, where the sun, right, just went into Aries, sign of new beginnings, but Mars is going into Pisces, so it's not quite there yet in Aries. After Pisces, the last sign of the zodiac, it will move into Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, but not until April 30th. So by the end of April, when Mercury retrograde and its post shadow period is starting to come to a close, that's when Mars will move into Aries. With Mars being in Pisces, our physical energy might feel a little diminished. We might not have that vim and vigor that we really want. 
Um, Mars likes to move forward in a particular direction and move forward fast, but in Pisces, he's going to have to meander and go with the flow and really trust and have faith, which is probably not Mars's strong suit, right? So instead of just kind of reacting or taking action, he's going to have to trust and have faith and just go with the flow of the universe and where the universe is leading um, him and his actions. So that might be a little funky for him. On Sunday the 24th, we actually end the week with a pretty nice aspect. It's Venus and Pisces. Again, Venus, the ruler of love, the ruler of money, um, in that magical sign of Pisces, although it sometimes can bring some confusion um, or illusion into the picture. But it's going to be in a positive sextile to Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion, blessings, prosperity, and abundance in the money sign of Taurus, or the sign that does rule personal resources, which is beyond money and finances. Personal resources is our time, our efforts, referrals from other people, support from other people. You know, these are resources that we can partake in in a positive way. Now, the great thing about this sextile between Venus and Jupiter is that Jupiter is known as the great benefic or the great planet of blessings. Venus is known as the lesser benefic, not that she's less than, but she's also a planet of blessings. And when these two come together in a positive connection, like a sextile, another one would be like a trine connection, then there's a potential for, again, a lot of good to come, good fortune in some way, shape, or form to happen. So definitely, again, be on the lookout for some positive uh, occurrences. Now, I will just make mention that as we end out this week on the 24th of March, as we move into Monday the 25th for next week's reading, we're going to have a full moon lunar eclipse at five degrees of Libra. So I'm just giving you a heads up. By the time we're done with this week, this weekend, we're going to be in the throes of or immersed in the power of that full moon lunar eclipse as it's growing. Now, full moons are going to be about completion and endings. Um, the idea of the eclipse magnifies whatever this is about. We're in Libra, the sign of balance, harmony, compromise, relationships, partnerships. So there's something brewing here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the messages from our angels and guides from the Psychic Tarot. There was lots of cards coming out for this one, and I have to think it's because we're moving into that spring equinox. So we have two cards, two cards, and two cards to look at. So let's look at the very first card that came out. Okay, we've got the solar plexus chakra, which totally makes sense because Aries, right, is going to rule just like the solar pl plexus chakra rules, confidence, courage, leadership, take charge ability, um, really being in your personal power here. So aside from that, let's see what else came out with this card to kind of give us some more depth to this particular card or this chakra. Okay, the, oh, I love it. It is the one of spiritual. So in this deck, the suit, the red suit is the suit of spiritual. It's like wands or rods or fire in the traditional tarot. So we're looking at the ace of fire, the ace of wands. It says prosperity begins. I love it. We've got hands coming together over the roots of this tree. We've got this abundance of, of oranges kind of being shown up here. So this could be about Coming together confidently, courageously, again, owning your personal power. But this could be collaboration with somebody. This could be you combining your energies with another person. The suit of rods or wands is often about business and career. So this could be a career or business opportunity to where you're planting some sort of seeds, the ace of fire, planting something to bring about a new beginning. You're going to bring healing to that. You're going to combine your energies, efforts, and resources to, um, you know, kind of give nurturing and growth to whatever seed you're planting. It's going to sprout something really big and beautiful and abundant. And it looks like it's going to bring in some prosperity and abundance here. Now, if it's not a collaboration with another person, this could just be you planting some sort of new seed with your newfound confidence and courage and leadership take charge ability. And again, you're bringing about this good fortune, this abundance, this prosperity, this growth. 
Now it's not gonna be necessarily right away because when you plant a new seed with the Ace of Fire, the Ace of Wands, you have to nurture it, you have to give it time to grow and expand. And again, we do have Mercury retrograde coming up the whole month of April. So that's gonna be our nurture time. That's gonna be our, you know, looking over the details and, and reassessing and redoing and, and, and reprocessing and, and making sure that there's vital energy that's given to whatever this is representing for you. This could also be, uh, aside from business or career opportunities, it could be something within yourself that you're kind of birthing a new a beginning within yourself or a new energy within yourself. One that's going to be, again, very abundant and prosperous. There's more joy. There's more, more happiness. There's more positivity coming in, more um, ability to take action and, and, and have movement. So again, whether this is within yourself, whether this is a project or something that you're working on individually or where you're collaborating with somebody else. This looks like a very good start with the spring equinox and the sun moving into Aries uh, as far as these messages from spirit go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next two cards. So the first of those next two cards, first of the next two cards is the seven of emotional. This is like the seven of cups. And it says to choose wisely. So again, we're in the uh, pre-shadow of Mercury, getting ready to go retrograde. So he's slowing down his motion. We might be presented with different options, different uh, directions or possibilities that we could go in. And the universe is saying to go into this number seven, which is really about analyzing and kind of picking things apart to understand all the working parts of something, what all the details might be, all the pros and the cons, um, using our inner wisdom and knowledge and our inner intuition, uh, what our inner gut feelings are to really discern which of these choices might be best for us. And if you can hold off on making a choice or a decision until after Mercury retrograde, that's even way better. If you can't, then this is just saying, again, make sure you're choosing your direction wisely. We've got some messenger birds up here. Birds are always about messages. Um, so pay attention to the signs, the symbols, the messages from spirit or animal totems or in your dreams or even something you might read or hear. Um, that might be some sort of spiritual guidance that you're needing to pay attention to. All right, let's see what came out with this. Okay. Major Arcana 14, <laughs> patience. Okay. So again, choose wisely. And if you can have a little bit of patience and maybe wait a little bit before you're making the decision, weighing out all of the options, weighing out all of the possibilities, again, weighing out all of the pros and cons. In the traditional tarot, Major Arcana 14 is known as temperance. So temperance is about balance and moderation and, yes, patience. So we've got a seed here. So it's interesting that we had this ace of fire earlier where we're planting a seed, right? A new beginning. And this person kind of has a seed in their hand and this magical energy kind of coming off of that. Now, they don't know what that magical energy is. It's not apparent. They don't know what that seed is going to produce because it's just a seed. But there's something that's brewing magically from the spiritual realm here. To me, this is kind of like spiritual energy. Um, things are, are shifting and moving on a spiritual level. Uh, energies, whether it's planetary energies or other universal energies, are needing to come into alignment before what before whatever this represents comes to pass or comes to fruition or, or grows and, and manifests into something. So here we just need to, again, have a little bit of patience. It's interesting. This is the first time that I've ever really zoned in on this. But we've got this kind of cap or hat on this person's head, and it's kind of half purple and it's half yellow. It's almost a little bit more purple than it is yellow. And this to me is the logical left brain, which is the yellow, right? Yellow to me is logic, mental body, thinking, perceiving, analyzing. But the little bit greater portion over here is the purple, which is intuition, listening psychically, 
to those messages of clairvoyance and clairaudience and claircognizance and yes, maybe even clairsentience. So we're definitely needing to kind of merge both the left and right brain, the logic and the intuition in order to um, eventually make whatever this choice is all about or you know whatever direction we're gonna go in. But all the while, again, it's saying to have a little bit of patience, if at all you can. We even got this flower right up here, right? So it's like opening up to the divine guidance and the download of information and messages from, again, that crown chakra, which is clear cognizance. So let's go ahead and take a look at the last two cards here for this week. Okay, so remember how temperance here or Major Arcana 14 says patience? That's interesting. This is the seven of wands, the seven of fire, the seven of spiritual, and it says patience again, patience and planning. So it's interesting too that we've got the seven of emotional, which is like the seven of cups, the number seven of emotional or cups. And then we've got the seven again of spiritual or the seven of wands or fire. So that number seven is highly active this week, which is again, going within to listen to your own inner guidance and inner wisdom, you know, connect with your own intuitive and psychic abilities to discern the path in front of you. And discern is a great word for the number seven because seven, the seven is very mental, but it's also very spiritual. So it is about logic and analyzing, but it's also about trust and faith. And so we're needing to discern again, we're needing to discern about all these different possibilities and potentials. And that's why the universe is asking us to have patience here, have patience and slow down and make a plan and have a strategy if you can, right? Don't be quick to make a decision if you can. I know sometimes we, we need to for whatever reason, but if you can at all wait until Mercury retrograde by the end of April is over with, because after, uh, after Monday, the 25th lunar eclipse, two weeks later, we're going to have a new moon solar eclipse in Aries, and that will really generate a new beginning for us. So use a little bit of patience, partake in a little bit of planning here before you walk through this, this door or through these pillars to something new, okay? Whatever it is, whatever it is you end up choosing looks like it's going to be good because we've got the yellow sun of confidence and courage and highlighting, you know, that solar plexus chakra energy to where we're going to confidently move into something. But right now, it's almost like more information is needed, more messages need to come in, or things need to, again, energetically align in a certain way before we make that move. And then the last card, the card that comes out with the seven of spiritual is the three of emotional. So we've got, we've got two spiritual cards, which is wands, and we've got two um, emotional cards, which are cups. But this is a great card. This is the three of cups or the three of emotional, and it says rejoice and celebration. So I feel like if you have that patience and you make the plan or strategy and you look at all the possibilities and options and weigh the pros and cons before you make a decision, then we're going to end up here where we're joyous and happy and, and celebrating something good. This is feeling really good emotionally. We feel really good emotionally. And this could be coming together with other people in celebration. This could be like a group of women coming together, especially if it's uh, some business, uh, a career-oriented thing to where we're celebrating some sort of uh, accomplishment or celebrating something that just feels really good. Our cups are overflowing with abundance and prosperity. That would be another uh, indication of the three of cups or the three of emotional, that there's abundance and prosperity, uh, but mostly on an emotional level. Again, we're just feeling really good about something here. Um, and again, whether you're rejoicing with others or just rejoicing in yourself. And I don't know that this is going to happen by the end of this week, but this is something that's coming as a completion or as I shouldn't say completion, but as a manifestation of the previous card messages that we got. So let's go ahead, put those aside. Let's see what your angels and guides have to say from the spell casting oracle card deck. 
So that first stone of choice was the golden calcite. So golden calcite people, what is the message for golden calcite people for the week? Okay, the one on the bottom is popping up. I'm going to pull that one. Compassion, okay? So have compassion for yourself. Have compassion for others. Um, you know, what I'm feeling is, is that, you know, this Pisces energy that we're coming out of, but Venus and, and Mars are still in Pisces, right? There's a lot of healing and releasing and purging and transmuting of, of, um, of patterns and energies that are taking place. And of course, a lot of these, you know, when we do healing, a lot of it is related to some sort of relationships in our lives, partnerships, you know, romantic partnerships, business partnerships, but family, friends, loved ones. And I feel like we're just needing to, you know, see from spiritual eyes what the other person might be going through as we still might need to set some good boundaries or make some tough decisions. So having compassion for the other person, having an open heart chakra and having that compassion is going to um, aid you as you move forward. It's almost like a spiritual lesson of, of having that unconditional love and compassion and forgiveness, even though you might need to say, no, this isn't for me anymore. No, I'm not going to put up with that anymore. I'm sorry, but this isn't, doesn't feel good to me you know, or whatever. Now, this, of course, can be having compassion for yourself, too. So I think about, you know, this beginning card of the solar plexus chakra and that planting of that seed of new beginnings here. So we might have been through quite a tough time late, lately, and maybe we haven't had the motivation or the energy or the confidence, or, you know, maybe we haven't felt very joy-filled, um, and maybe we've wanted to just kind of, you know, give up and we felt sad and depressed. And so have compassion for yourself too, because we all grow through uh, what we call dark nights of the soul. We all go through time periods where we've got to do a clearing and a cleansing and, and we're evolving and growing and, and energies within us are realigning. But sometimes it brings up physical, you know, tiredness and fatigue or emotions that we don't necessarily want to experience or mindsets that are no longer in our highest and best interest. And this is just saying, you know, have compassion for yourself. Now, this woman here actually has her hands on the world. So I feel like it's a good thing to send out love and light and compassion to the planet as well, because a lot of you are very empathic, right? A lot of light workers, a lot of people on this path are very empathic and just picking up on the emotions and energies of people all over the world, events, situations, and circumstances that are difficult and challenging all over the world. And oftentimes you don't even know that that sadness you're feeling is not your own sadness, that it's, again, it's, it's on a collective level. So just taking a few moments every now and again to send out that love and light and healing to the planet is also going to be beneficial for you. Let's put that back in the deck. Let's pull the card, the message for Vesuvianite, right? So Vesuvianite people, special message for Vesuvianite people. This one's calling my attention. Ooh, confidence. There we go. There's an Aries keyword right there. So you are Vesuvianite people coming into more of a sense of confidence and courage and vital energy and take charge energy, um, planting new seeds, you're spreading your wings here and you're getting ready to kind of fly. Um, this almost looks like a big bright sun behind her, right? And when I think about, you know, uh, spreading your wings and flying and you're next to the sun, it reminds me of the, the mythical phoenix, right? The, the bird um, flew into the sun, got all kind of burnt up or whatever, and it became the phoenix rising from the ashes anew. So here with your confidence and courage, you're going to pull yourself out of a certain uh, energy, uh, a certain karmic pattern, a certain situation, and you're going to find your confidence again. You're going to feel different as the sun moves into Aries on the spring equinox, and you're going to find your individuality and your independence, um, again, your physical energy, your emotional energy, your mental energy, and you're going to be ready 
to just spread your wings and ascend and fly and move towards that which it is you want to create, which the base of is joy, happiness, and fulfillment. Okay, let's put that back in the deck. And then for those of you that chose the lemon quartz, okay, special message for the lemon quartz people this week, lemon quartz. I'm gonna close my eyes and shuffle again because I was like, oh, this card, this card, this card. Okay, we can only choose one card, Spirit. So, Lemon Quartz, people. This one, okay. Truth. You're, you are finding or following the light of your truth here, okay? Uh, we've got sort of like, it's interesting, it's almost like a, a candle or a lantern. It's got a face in it though, right? And then it's got two hands down here kind of holding that light. So you are the light that you are seeking. You have the answers that you're seeking, right? It's like the light is lighting your way. The light, of course, is God, universe, great spirit, all that is. But that light is within you and it is you. You are a part of the universe. So go within, look for Look within for your own inner light and your own inner guidance to light the way, right? This is going to lead you to whatever the next step on your path is. Um, hold it close to like, I want to say hold it close to your heart, but also hold it close to your solar plexus chakra because, you know, again, we do have the solar plexus chakra here. So we're going to hold the light in our heart, but we're also going to hold that that power, that personal power and that inner wisdom and those messages, um, that confident energy, we're gonna hold it in our solar plexus chakra as well. And these to me are the hands with the uh, kind of down there where maybe the solar plexus chakra would be. So whether you're lighting your own way or being a light to the world, um, just kind of embody that essence of light. A great visualization would be for you to close your eyes and just maybe sit out in the sun because it actually helps when you sit out in the sun and feel the warmth on your face. And even when your eyes close, you can kind of, you know, you can sense that the light is shining down upon you and visualize that light of the universe shining down or raining down upon you all these blessings of confidence and courage and abundance and prosperity. And again, be in your truth, speak your truth, own your truth and move forward with your truth. All right, everybody, I hope you've all enjoyed this uh, weekly energy forecast. Sending you all lots of love and light and many, many abundant blessings for the planting of your new seeds with the sun moving into Aries. Namaste, everyone.